Okay, so let's talk about this thing called the unit circle. It's going to help us organize our thoughts and, well, not so much thoughts, but organize our information about sine, cosine, and tangent for various angles, various common angles. And the common angles that we're going to be dealing with are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And we're going to extend those angles into the other three quadrants and think about also the angles that are like those things in these quadrants. So if we go into quadrant two over here, um, what is 30 degrees less than 180? Well, it's 150. Um, what is 45 degrees less than 180? It's 135. And what's 60 degrees less than 180? Well, that is going to be 120 degrees. And then we'll jump into quadrant 3. What is 30 degrees more than 180? It's going to be 210 degrees. What's 45 degrees more than 180? That would be 225 degrees. And what's 60 degrees more than 180? That's going to be 240 degrees. Notice I'm always going 30 degrees more than and less than 180. Let's jump into quadrant 4. What is 30 degrees less than 160? I'm sorry, 360. I'm comparing this to, I'm comparing this to the x-axis right up here. This is 0 degrees, but once around is also 360. So what's 30 degrees less than that? Well, 30 degrees less than 360 would be 330 degrees. 45 degrees less than 360 is going to be 315 degrees. And 60 degrees less than 360 is going to be 300 degrees. These are the angles that we need to get very familiar with. These are the angles that we're going to be expected to be able to find exact trigonometric values for without our graphing calculator. And this circle is going to help us organize them and find the sine, cosine, and tangent of each of these. This first quadrant, right over here, these angles are called our reference angles. If all, I, if all I can remember is what's happening in quadrant one, I can extend those ideas to quadrant two. Because these three angles, the 150, the 135, and the 120, they are in reference to over here. The 150 degree is going to be like the 30 degree angle. The 135 degree angle is going to be like the 45, and the 120 is going to be like the 60. So, similarly down here. Before we get into any numbers, let's remember how the quadrants of our coordinate plane work, and what kind of signs we're going to deal with. So, in Quadrant 1, ordered pairs go positive, positive. In quadrant 2, ordered pairs go negative, positive. In quadrant 3, they're both negative. And in quadrant 4, it goes positive, negative. Okay, well, what does that have to do with any of this? Well, I'll show you. Let's zoom back in on quadrant 1 here. And I'm going to draw a triangle. Our good friend... this triangle right here. So we're dealing with a 30 degree angle. And we call this the unit circle. And the unit circle is called that because it has a radius equal to one unit. This point right there is one comma zero. So this side of the triangle is not one, but this side is. And in a 30-60-90 triangle, there exists a special relationship between
between the sides, the short leg is always half the hypotenuse. The long leg is always the short leg times the square root of 3. So we could say that this side is the square root of 3 over 2. So, ladies and gentlemen, what would be the ordered pair out here if we're thinking about this on a coordinate plane? Well, the ordered pair right there is going to be square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And now let's back it up for a second. Let's go back to this right triangle that I've created and let's talk about Sokotoa. So Sokotoa says that the sine of 30 degrees will be the opposite over the hypotenuse, 1 half over 1. The cosine will be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is square root of 3 over 2 over 1. Which are these coordinates right here? This first, this x coordinate is the cosine of 30. The second coordinate is the sine of 30. And that's pretty cool. Now, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. It's the sine divided by the cosine. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a hugely important thing for us to recognize. And that is that the sine of any angle divided by the cosine of that angle is equal to the tangent of that angle. And we, once we have this circle organized and our thoughts together on it, if we know these ordered pairs, we can find the tangent of any angle by taking the sine divided by the cosine. Now, let's move on to the 45 degree angle. So here we are with our 45 degree angle. So I've drawn a right triangle into our circle, into our unit circle. We have 45 degrees down here. Um, that means that the other angle up there has to also be 45. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle where the hypotenuse is 1. Now what's the relationship between the sides? Well, if you remember this relationship, the two legs are the same. If I call one of them x, the other one would be x. And the hypotenuse is always the, sh the leg times the square root of 2. So this equals x square root of 2. If we solve this for x, um, we'll get x equals 1 over square root 2. And rationalizing the denominator, we get what should be a familiar number to us, that x is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So this ordered pair out here on the edge is square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2 because the x, co x coordinate of that point, the x side, this length for the x is the same as the height of the triangle, the y coordinate. So the x and y coordinates are both the same number, and they're both this square root of 2 over 2. So what does that mean in terms of trig? Well, the cosine, the adjacent divided by hypotenuse, square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1, is this, the x coordinate. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite side, square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1, there is our sine value for 45. Crazy cool. Let's move on to the 60 degree angle. So here we go. Here's a 60 degree angle. And if that base angle is 60, I hope that you can all get on board with the fact that this angle up here is going to be the 30, which means that it's just a turnaround triangle from what's down here. And we figured out that the short leg of a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if the hypotenuse is 1, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Sorry, 1 half. I lie. And the long leg of this triangle is square root of 3 over 2. So the ordered pair up here, this all-important ordered pair that we look at up at the... This ordered pair is 1 half, comma, square root of 3 over 2. 
And again, let's talk trigonometry opposite over hypotenuse. Square root of 3 over 1, square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1. The y coordinate is the sine. And cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 half. The x coordinate is cosine. So, in general, let's back it up and make a generalization here. All of these ordered pairs are cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. That's a pretty powerful thing. This circle is going to help us organize all the sine and cosine values, and from them, using sine divided by cosine, we can find the tangent of all these angles. So now you're thinking, okay, that's great. First quadrant, I know the sine and cosine for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. How in the world can that possibly help me for all these other angles? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 120, the 135, and the 150 are a geometric reflection across the y-axis. This 150 degree triangle, if I draw it in, is just a reflection of this one. It's a reflection of those points. So 150 degrees, the coordinates for that point on this circle is or are negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. The x coordinate becomes negative. The 135 is a reflection of the 45 degree angle. Those coordinates are negative square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Sine and cosine of 135. 120 degrees. It's a reflection of the 60 degree point. So that point right there, negative 1 half, comma, square root of 3 over 2. So there we go. What's the cosine of 120 degrees? Well, it's right there, negative 1 half. Now I want you to pause the video, and I want you to see if you can't write down the ordered pairs that go on the bottom half of the circle. Remember, all we're doing is reflecting the points that are on the top half. So pause the video and give that a try. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what your unit circle should look like with all of the positives and negatives and values plugged in for each angle. Notice I put ordered pairs for 180 degrees, 90 degrees, 0 degrees, likewise 360, and 270 degrees. Now we can use this visual to help us answer trig questions. What is the sine of 135? So sine of 135, there's my 135 degree angle. What's the sine? Well, sine is the y coordinate. The sine of 135 is squared of 2 over 2. What is the cosine of 300 degrees? 300 degrees is down here in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, cosine, the positive is positive. It's the x-coordinate. Cosine of 300 is 1 half. Wow, there we go. So let me pose this to you another way. Let's look at another unit circle. So here's quadrant one, and I began by talking about how we, if we can remember quadrant one, we can deal with any other quadrant by referencing 30, 45, and 60 degrees. And what I need you to remember is that all silly turtles crawl. In quadrant one, all trig functions are positive. In quadrant two, only the sine is positive, cosine and tangent are negative. In quadrant 3, only tangent is positive, sine and cosine are both negative, and in quadrant 4, only cosine is positive, and tangent and sine are negative. Okay, cool. Well, how does that help me? Well, let's say that I want, I want to know what the sine of 315 is. Well, 315 degrees, that is in quadrant 4. So that's useful to remember. This right here is a quadrant four angle. And in quadrant four, sine is negative. And 315 degrees, that is 45 degrees away from 360. We're right here. This reference angle, if you will, the distance from the x-axis is 45 degrees. So I'm referencing right here, sine is this number, 
And in quadrant 4, sine is negative, so sine 315 is negative square root 2 over 2. And we can go through a similar argument for any of these angles I gave you on the other unit circle and know pretty quickly, we should be able to know pretty quickly, what the sine, cosine, and tangent values are. If you can visualize the angle and you can remember quadrant one, this should be a wonderful, wonderful thing for